All right, in this video sequence, we're going to start going over the design of a low noise amplifier. Here I've drawn a basic cascoded low noise amplifier where I have a cascoded current source that is going to be used to generate a bias voltage that will create a mirrored current based upon the reference current source here to flow through our LNA path. So the left path here is a bias path and the right path here is an amplification path. Now I've set this up as a one-to-one -one current mirror thus far, uh, but in the future we can modify that. Right now we're going to use small signal simulations in order to determine what the optimal size of the device is in order to achieve a minimum noise figure. And at the same time, we're going to understand what the maximum gain that we can achieve is with the single cascode stage. You'll notice a couple of things that I've done here. One, I've put a big resistance in the path between the signal source and the bias path. This will keep current from wanting to go in this direction and instead go towards the LNA, signal current. And at the output or the drain side of the uh, cascoded LNA transistors, I've put a large DC inductance, sometimes called a choke, and a big bypass capacitor. This will uh, prevent the AC signal from wanting to go up towards the supply voltage, the low impedance up here, uh, and wanting to go towards the port impedance uh, that port 1 presents. In this design, I have a DC supply that's equal to 0.9 volts, and we're going to sweep the current and the size of the devices because it turns out that the optimal noise performance comes at a particular current density. I've opened up a Maestro simulation. I'm going to add an analysis, which will be an SP analysis. I'm going to select the ports. And we're going to sweep this across frequency. Now, how do we determine how much current we can use and what frequency we can use? These will be design specifications that come from the application that you're operating in. For the time being, let's presume that we're making an LNA for the five to seven gigahertz Wi-Fi bands. The frequency range is roughly 5.15 to 7.25 gigahertz. Uh, so we are going to sweep a little bit larger range than that just so that we can see some roll off. So here I'm going to sweep from four to nine gigahertz. Well, I'll keep in mind that the design target that I really care about is the 5.15 to 7.25 gigahertz range. All right, so our simulation is set up. So let's go ahead, we'll check and save our design and we will run our simulation. Oh. I forgot that I had set a few variables. Uh, it's complaining that I didn't uh, initialize those. All right, as a result of this, uh, the simulation will have failed. So at first I'm just going to set the, the bias current at one milliamp and the width of the device at one micrometer. Oh, and one more thing on this particular point, if we go and look at the device, I've set it up uh, as a mineral device where I'm setting the total gate width uh, and uh, all right, one note on width, uh, I have this set up uh, ideally as the width of a single finger of a device and I'm going to sweep this value. So I need to go back in to our devices and modify them a bit. I'm going to do this so that I select all selected devices. I'm going to change this so that I'm doing a finger width dimension mode where I'm going to sweep W and I'm going to use eight fingers for the time being. Of course you can scale this if needed. All right, now our design variables are initialized so we can run the simulation actually this time. Okay. 
And I did already forget one thing. I should set a DC simulation up so that we can make sure that the DC current is what we expect it to be. I'll do that in just a moment. All right, so I'm also going to add a DC simulation, which is right here. I'll save DC operating points. And for the time being, I'm just going to uh, leave that fixed. All right, now I did see an error in our simulation. So let's see what that was. It tells us error, the instance N3 is, oh, uh, referencing an undefined model. So I've forgotten to enable my model. Here, I'm going to enable the RF lib. Of course, this will depend upon the model that you're using for your particular design. All right, so we're now ready to begin our simulation. So here I've set up an S parameter simulation and a DC simulation. Uh, and let's open these up. The S parameter simulation I've set up, I'm going to simulate between ports, uh, port zero and port one. Uh, this will be, of course, uh, uh, port one and two, respectively, when we talk about S parameters. I'm going to do a frequency sweep from 4 gigahertz to 9 gigahertz with a step size of 100 megahertz. Uh, this will sweep uh, to cover the band of interest for us for our LNA design, which is going to be a uniband LNA from 5 to 7 gigahertz. And I've also clicked to do noise analysis with the output port at port 1 and the input port at port 0. For the DC analysis, I'm only saving the DC operating point. This is just to make sure that the LNA is biased correctly. Initially, I'm going to set the bias current at one milliamp and the width at one micrometer. And the reason uh, for this is that I have eight fingers in the device. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is sweeping the current and the width of the device in order to find the optimal current density that flows through the device to minimize the noise figure. All right, with this, we should be ready to run a simulation. So let's run the simulation. All right, you can see that the simulation is run. Let's look at our results. I'm first going to go to annotate DC node voltages. And you'll see that I have the DC node voltages annotated at every node. This can help me to check the bias condition of the devices. I'll go to results, annotate DC operating points as well, and this will uh, provide DC operating points for the different transistors. So for instance, you can see that the current flowing through the devices, the drain current here is one milliamp, the GM is about 10 millisiemens. Uh, and you can also see that the mirrored current that flows through the, uh, the uh, LNA uh, portion of the device is a little bit lower due to channel length modulation. You can see that the uh, output current is about uh, 980 microamps, uh, or 983 microamps, about 17 microamps short of one milliamp. Now we could go back and correct this if we wanted to, but in this case, I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could go back and either adapt the width of the device a little bit, uh, or I could adapt the tail current in, until I got one milliamp. Since our intent is to sweep the device size and device current so that we can find the optimal current density, I'm not going to do that. All right, now let's go back in and go to results, direct plot, main form. And here we're going to plot a couple of things. So the first thing I'm going to plot is G max. I'm gonna add this to the outputs. And what this is, is it tells us what the maximum gain is if the input port and output port were conjugately matched. Here we can see that G max is about you know, it starts at about 36 dB and goes down to about 32 dB uh, at the upper end of the frequency band. This is the maximum achievable gain that we can achieve with this particular device uh, at this particular bias current. We can go back in and change the width over length ratios, and we can go back in and change the device current if we wanted to change this number. The next thing I'm going to do is plot NF min. This will be the minimum possible noise figure that can be achieved. And here I'm going to plot these in a different sub-window. So I'm going to go to File, New Sub-Window, Rectangular. I'm going to move enough min over to a new window. Now here you can see that 
again, the minimum noise figure that we can achieve is somewhere around 0.4 dBs uh, or 400 millidBs. All right, with these two metrics, what I'm now going to do is set up a parametric sweep where I can sweep the device width and the device current. And what we're going to find for the most part is that these transistors will have an optimum current density where they perform best in terms of the overall noise figure that they can achieve. All right, so let's go ahead and set that up. All right, you can look to see uh, for the device that I've already set this up so that I'm sweeping the width of a single gate finger and I've got eight gate fingers uh, that are provided. All of the devices are sized to have the same exact size. I'm now going to go in and set up a corner simulation. All right, I've got a corner setup made. I'm going to add a corner here. And in this corner, we can do all kinds of things like we can sweep temperature, we can uh, set up different models. Uh, for me, for the time being, I'm just going to sweep a couple of the, divine, the design variables. So I don't know what, uh, what the minimum size uh, width for this particular process is, and I don't want to share that because it might be proprietary. So I'm just going to sweep from say uh, around 600 nanometers in steps of 100 nanometers up to say two micrometers. And I'm also going to sweep the bias current and I'll sweep the bias current from say 0.5 milli and steps of 0.1 milli and up to say 1.5 milli amps. All right, now this is a pretty broad range. It's 165 simulations. Uh, so you might want to not, not want to run this if you have uh, limited CAD licenses available. Uh, but for the time being, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, run this. Now yeah, let's cut down on this a little bit. Bit of overkill here. All right, so with that, the corners are set up. I'm just going to run that one corner and we're going to plot Gmax and NFmin as a function of the current and width. This is going to take a few moments. Oh, one other thing that I can do uh, is I can go into my setup, go to job setup, and set this to run a few jobs at the same time. And this will help to speed things along. All right, now we're ready to run. All right, so I'm gonna stop here, and when we come back, I'm going to uh, show you the results of the simulation. All right, so the simulation is finished and we now have a set of curves uh, swept over frequency for Gmax and for NFmin. Now we're looking for the curve that gives us the lowest possible noise figure. Uh, it looks like it's this yellow curve right here. Uh, and we can look to see the conditions that this uh, applies over. So this was done uh, for a bias current of 1.5 milliamps and a width of 1.5 microns. Now what that tells us is that this is actually the longest, uh, the, the, the widest width and the highest current we swept to. And so it tells us that we actually haven't achieved the optimal current density uh, because these are both at the max end of the range. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the range of the corner uh, simulation uh, and I'm gonna hope to find uh, the range that does give us the best noise performance. All right, so I expanded the search range uh, for this particular transistor uh, to include a wider range of widths and uh, currents. Uh, and uh, again, interestingly, found that the, uh, that the optimal uh, current uh, and width for this particular device was 1.5 milli milliamps uh, and 1.5 micrometers times eight. Uh, and so now we have an idea of what the optimal current density for the device is. We can design the, uh, an amplifier to have optimal noise performance just by choosing the proper current density. Now, how do we pick the current that we want to use? Well, there might be a power constraint or a linearity constraint uh, 
uh, that dictates that we need to have under a certain amount of power or our linearity needs to be above a certain number. And that might dictate that we have to have a certain current consumption in order to meet the specifications. That will be up to the individual LNA spec that you're designing. Now, what you might notice is that even though this current density uh, of uh, eight fingers uh, now, what you might notice is that this current density of 1.5 milliamps divided by eight fingers times 1.5 micrometers yields a noise figure that is very low. But what you also might notice is that even other non-optimal current densities yield pretty good noise figures. So for instance, everything that we plotted here uh, has a minimum noise figure uh, that is under uh, you know, 0.54 dBs. So we can achieve some very good numbers here. Let's look at the impact on the gain. Let's go over to Gmax. So this green curve uh, is our gain curve. What you can see is in choosing the minimum noise figure characteristic, you're gonna sacrifice about a half a dB of gain compared to uh, the peak. That's still not too bad. We have good gain out of uh, a single stack uh, cascode stage and pretty good noise figure. In the next video, we're going to start to optimize our design and we'll do that by picking the width based upon a particular current density that we're looking for. Uh, and then we'll start to optimize the impedance matching networks to optimize the noise performance. We'll do that in the next video.